14 Ways to Stop Overthinking Constant worrying and overthinking can often lead to issues with mental health and well-being. Techniques such as deep breathing, meditation, self-compassion, and asking for help from a healthcare professional can help alleviate the stress of overthinking. You finally have a few quiet moments to yourself, only to immediately start wondering if you forgot to send that thank you email or whether you've overestimated your chances of getting the promotion. Sound familiar? Worrying and overthinking are part of the human experience, but when left unchecked, they can take a toll on your well-being. Dwelling on the same thoughts may even increase your risk of certain mental health conditions, according to 2021 research. So, what's an overthinking person to do? These tips can help you move in the right direction. The way you respond to your thoughts can sometimes keep you in a cycle of rumination, or repetitive thinking. Rumination can often cause negative consequences to a person's mental health. The next time you find yourself continuously running things over in your mind, take note of how it affects your mood. Do you feel irritated, nervous, or guilty? What's the primary emotion behind your thoughts? Having self-awareness is key to changing your mindset. Shut down overthinking by involving yourself in an activity you enjoy. This looks different for everyone, but ideas include 1. Learning some new kitchen skills by tackling a new recipe. 2. Going to your favorite workout class. 3. Taking up a new hobby, such as painting. 4. Volunteering with a local organization. It can be hard to start something new when you're overwhelmed by your thoughts. If finding a distraction feels daunting, try setting aside a small chunk of time, say, 30 minutes, every other day. Use this time to either explore potential distractions or dabble in existing ones. You've heard it a million times, but that's because it works. The next time you find yourself tossing and turning over your thoughts, close your eyes and breathe deeply. Developing a regular meditation practice is an evidence-backed way to help clear your mind of nervous chatter by turning your attention inward. All you need is 5 minutes and a quiet spot. How will all the issues floating around in your mind affect you 5 or 10 years from now? Will anyone really care that you bought a fruit plate for the potluck instead of baking a pie from scratch? Don't let minor issues turn into significant hurdles. Trying to ease the load for someone else can help you put things in perspective. Think of ways you can be of service to someone going through a difficult time. Does your friend who's in the middle of a divorce need a few hours of childcare? Can you pick up groceries for your neighbor who's been sick? Realizing you have the power to make someone's day better can keep negative thoughts from taking over. It also gives you something productive to focus on instead of your never-ending stream of thoughts. When you're in the midst of overthinking, stop and take out your notebook or your favorite note-taking app on your phone. Jot down five things that have gone right over the past week and your role in them. These don't need to be huge accomplishments. Maybe you stuck to your coffee budget this week or cleaned out your car. When you look at it on paper or on screen, you might be surprised at how these little things add up. If it feels helpful, refer back to this list when you find your thoughts spiraling. Not ready to commit to a meditation routine? There are plenty of other ways to ground yourself in the present moment. Sometimes, quieting your thoughts requires stepping outside of your usual perspective. How you see the world is shaped by your life experiences, values, and assumptions. Imagining things from a different point of view can help you work through some of the noise. Jot down some of the thoughts swirling around in your head. Try to investigate how valid each one is. For example, maybe you're stressing about an upcoming trip because you just know it's going to be a disaster. But is that really what's going to happen? What kind of proof do you have to back that up? Sometimes, you might go over the same thoughts repeatedly because you aren't taking any concrete actions about a certain situation. Can't stop thinking about someone you envy? Instead of having it ruin your day, let your feelings help you make better choices. The next time you're visited by the green-eyed monster, be proactive and jot down ways you can go about reaching your goals. This will get you out of your head and channel your energy into taking actionable steps. Dwelling on past mistakes keeps you from letting go. If you're beating yourself up over something you did last week, try refocusing on self-compassion. Here are some ways to get you started. 1. Take note of a stressful thought. 2. Pay attention to the emotions and bodily responses that arise. 3. Acknowledge that your feelings are true for you in the moment. 4. Adopt a phrase that speaks to you, such as may I accept myself as I am or I am enough. Some things will always be out of your control. Learning how to accept this can go a long way toward curbing overthinking. 
One study from 2018 shows that accepting negative thoughts and fears can help improve psychological health. Of course, this is easier said than done, and it won't happen overnight. But look for small opportunities where you can confront the situations you frequently worry about. Maybe it's standing up to a bossy co-worker or taking that solo day trip you've been dreaming of. Do not overthink it. The most challenging economics class to teach is the first year university class, for the students already know all there is to know. This gels with what my grandfather used to tell me. When you start doing something new, you tend to be quite opinionated and wise with respect to the required solution or approach. It's only when you learn more about a subject, gain experience and become more of a specialist that it dawns on you just how little you know. I deliberately use the word specialist, and not expert, which is a word that I loathe. As Lawrence J. Peter once said, an economist is an expert who will know tomorrow why the things he slash. She predicted yesterday did not happen today. Advertisement. This brings me to economics and politics. If ever you have had the pleasure to teach, I deliberately avoid the word lecture. First year economics, you will appreciate that there tends to be an extremely fine line between the two disciplines. As a teacher, I used to urge students to not use economics to try to determine a person's political affiliation. Concerning the difference between economics and politics, www.economicshelf.org states, economics is concerned with studying and influencing the economy. Politics, on the other hand, is the theory and practice of influencing people through the exercise of power. Advertisement. While preparing to write last week's installment of this column, I came across a now faded copy of my economics honors textbook, A History of Economic Thought, written by William J. Barber. It was first published in 1967, but my copy was the 1987 edition. From this, are you able to guess my age, I won't tell you if I bought it new or secondhand? Can you also guess the nationality of these economists, Adam Smith, Thomas Robert Malthus, David Ricardo, John Stuart Mill, Alfred Marshall, and arguably the two rock stars, Karl Marx and John Maynard Keynes. They and the supporting cast of Jean-Baptiste Colbert, J.K. Galbraith, Henry George, and John Stuart Mill, besides others, were Caucasian, and predominantly European. For some, that might represent the political angle. But rather than wanting to rewrite history and fixating on the injustice of the past, why not rather own the future? In the immortal words of Oscar Wilde, the best revenge is to live well. South Africans need to live well, as a consequence of their own doing, and not because of outside influence. As regards being dependent on outside influence, how has that worked out for South Africans? What I am proposing is for South Africa to seek a unique South African solution instead of seeking its economic chart from foreigners. Instead of asking others, consultants and academics, for ideas, why not simply steal the ideas of the founding economists? In the words of the late former Apple CEO extraordinaire Steve Jobs, Picasso had a saying, good artists copy, great artists steal, and we have always been shameless about stealing great ideas. But then again, there is nothing new. Yes, in economics you have heard it all. In the words of King Solomon, said to be the wisest man to have ever lived, there is no new thing under the sun. An echo of these words comes from an unlikely source, Marie Antoinette, who said, there is nothing new except what has been forgotten. My biggest fear is that the South African government is seemingly anticipating that others, outsiders, will find something new, and remarkable, while only analysis paralysis, the inability to decide due to overthinking a challenge, awaits. I leave you to ponder the words of Ariz Manzan, when you think too much, instead of acting and doing things, you are overthinking. When you analyze, comment and repeat the same thoughts over and over again, instead of acting, you are overthinking. Overthinking can lead you to focus too much on the future and not enough on the now. Photographed by Trevor Jackson, for the Times, Los Angeles Times photo illustration. I'm a senior with a physical disability. Throughout my four-year journey at Daniel Pearl, I've had my highs and my lows, but I got through it. People are going to have to get through the things they need to and maneuver around any obstacle in their way, just as I did. My disability is called brachial plexus palsy which consists of impairment of my right arm due to some of the nerves being torn at birth. I've had my disability my whole life, so I've learned to adapt. A challenge I've undertaken is martial arts. I have practiced karate, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, boxing and Muay Thai, while also sparring against opponents with all physically able limbs. I've overcome a lot of obstacles that people with two good hands cannot do, which I'm really proud of. I have and will continue to never let my arms stop me from completing a task. 
As for school, it's important to stay on top of your work and maintain good grades, but it's also important to practice self-love and stay in the present. Overthinking can lead you to focus too much on the future and not enough on the now, which is a gift, 